In times of trouble, I turn to small comforts. Time with family, cuddling with a pet, or these next scientists who are keeping us safe and healthy with STEM. You know, the basics. Cities have long been built around waterways because that resource can be used to irrigate crops and transport goods. It's even a perfect selfie backdrop. But city life can put the health of an urban river in trouble. So who's looking out for these waterways? In Texas, two young ecologists are Jimena Vivanco with the Trinity Park Conservancy and Abby Heath of Green Space Dallas. I thought I was gonna be a doctor until I realized my huge phobia of blood. And it was in high school that it really set me to focus on environmental science as a career path. When I was in I think the second grade, I wanted to be a zoologist. And tons of people were like, you can't do that. When I was in high school, I actually went into theater, but I did find my way back to ecology. And I actually use a lot of my tech theater skills to organize different ecological programs. One of those programs is the Texas Stream Team, where Abby and Jimena train citizen scientists to monitor the health of the Trinity River. The main reason that we're testing water along the Trinity is to make sure that there's no sort of pollutants that are negatively impacting the quality of the water that's running through our city. To do this, they use a mobile chemistry lab that tests, among other things, the water's pH and dissolved oxygen levels. pH levels tell us how caustic or corrosive the waters are. The girls mix an indicator solution into a small vial of sample water, which reacts to how many hydrogen ions are present and as it reacts, it's changing into the color of the pH, and we'll be able to compare it with our viewer and get a good, accurate result of what we have. Tap water is about a seven on the pH scale, but drinkable water can live between six and eight. By comparing the color of the water to the pH key, Hamina can find the sample's acidity levels. This looks like it's at a range eight. Next up, the team measures the water for its levels of oxygen? No not the O part of H2O. Their next test measures dissolved oxygen, which enters water from the air. It's what aquatic plants and animals actually breathe underwater. Our greatest concern is seeing low levels of dissolved oxygen because that not only affects the quality of the water, but it also affects the animals that use the water or live in it. To get accurate oxygen levels, the water first has to be fixed with a mixture of chemicals including sulfuric acid that removes any microorganisms. This takes about three minutes, just long enough for a dance party. <laughs> this process is known as the Winkler method and has been used by scientists since 1888. After fixing the sample, they add an iodine-based starch indicator solution, which turns the water purple. Then they top it off with their final chemicals. We'll be using our sodium thiosulfate to help us with our titration. The resulting reaction slowly turns the sample clear. And by measuring the precise amount needed, these scientists can tell how much dissolved oxygen originally existed in the water. I'm looking at about yeah. five more The data gathered in these tests by Abby, Jimena, and their citizen scientists is reported to a research institute that uses the information in a variety of projects that help promote and protect not only the 710 mile long river, but also the animals and humans who live alongside it. Part of the reason why Stream Team is so important is it puts power back into the community's hands. This is one way that you're able to take it back and say, this is me doing my part and taking care of the body of water that I love and live close to. Now that's something to dance about. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.